Whatever happened to Jan Smithers, Bailey Quarters from TV's WKRP in Cincinnati. Jan Smithers, a former TV actress, gained her greatest recognition for her performance as Bailey Quarters in the popular TV series WKRP in Cincinnati. Following her time on the beloved sitcom, Jan shifted her focus from acting to motherhood. As the new millennium arrived, she redirected her attention towards pursuits such as yoga and raising awareness about climate change. In this video, we will delve into Jan Smithers' journey and activities after her role in WKRP in Cincinnati. Jan Smithers, originally named Karen Jan Smithers, was born on July 3, 1949, in Woodland Hills, California. She came from a family with a legal background, as her father worked as a lawyer, while her mother was a homemaker. Jan was one of four sisters, and she shared a close bond with her family. Tragically, Jan experienced a devastating loss at a young age when, at the age of 21, she lost her eldest sister in a car accident. This event had a profound impact on her life and likely influenced her choices in the years to come. Jan received her early education at the William Howard Taft Charter High School in California. She displayed an early interest in the arts and pursued her passion at the Schuinar Art Institute which is now known as the California Institute of the Arts, located in Los Angeles. However, her artistic pursuits took a backseat as she decided to embark on a career in acting. Even before her acting career took off, Jan had to overcome a personal challenge. During her high school years, she was involved in a serious car accident that left her with a severe injury to her chin. This accident left a permanent scar near her chin area. During her teenage years, Jan's life took an unexpected turn when she was interviewed by David Moberg from Newsweek for a feature story on typical American teenagers in the 1960s. It was the year 1966, and Jan was just 16 years old, a diligent high school student who had never even contemplated playing hooky. However, on one fateful day, she found herself persuaded by a surfer, an unexpected turn of events that led her to skip school for the very first time in her life. This seemingly minor act of rebellion would prove to be the spark that ignited her path to fame. Little did she know that this decision to break the rules and skip school would change the course of her life forever. On that fateful day, while her surfer friend ventured out to ride the waves, Jan chose to stay behind, finding herself alone on the tranquil beach. Little did she know that this decision would lead to a life-changing encounter. As she sat there, she noticed two men approaching her their slender figures resembling little pencils as they walked along the shoreline. One of them had long hair, and both carried cameras around their necks. They walked up to her and explained their purpose, saying, We're doing an article on teens across the country, and we're looking for a girl from California. We're wondering if you'd be interested in doing the article. The article they referred to was none other than a widely read and impactful piece by Newsweek titled The Teenagers a Newsweek survey of what they're really like. This feature was a significant publication for Newsweek that year, and it showcased a collection of photographs of various teenagers from different backgrounds and regions. Among the images captured by Newsweek photographer Julian Wasser, it was Jan Smithers' photograph that found its way to the cover of the magazine. The cover shot catapulted Jan into the spotlight, making her an instant sensation. Her photos and interview for the Newsweek story captured the essence of the era and resonated with readers nationwide. The exposure she received from this feature had Hollywood agents scrambling to learn more about the captivating girl from California. Jan's rise to fame could be likened to the 1960s equivalent of going viral as her image became iconic and the aura she exuded on the cover was admired far and wide. Such was the impact of Jan Smithers' debut in the world of fame an unexpected and serendipitous journey that began with a chance encounter on a California beach, where her natural charm and charisma caught the attention of those who would ultimately shape her future in Hollywood. Newsweek photographer Julian Wasser, who discovered Jan on a California beach for the iconic 1966 feature, The Teenagers, a Newsweek survey of what they're really like, vividly recalled the moment he first laid eyes on her. As he strolled along the beach, he stumbled upon an incredibly beautiful girl, a high school student at the time, who was, in his words, nobody then. She possessed an effortless allure that he couldn't ignore. 
To him, she was the epitome of a typical California beauty who, somewhat surprisingly, didn't fully grasp her own allure. Following this unexpected break, Jan's parents' home phone became a constant chorus of ringing as agents vied for the chance to represent the rising star. Jan embarked on a promising modeling career, appearing in print advertisements for automobiles and motorcycles. One of her notable endeavors included an advertisement for the National Auto Dealers Association, which was prominently featured in the March 1967 edition of Hot Rod magazine. However, Jan's magnetic allure and talent were not confined to the world of modeling alone. She made a seamless transition into acting, marking her television debut in a 1973 episode of the anthology series Love Story. This show featured an array of stars, including icons like Janet Lee and Kurt Russell. Jan's acting career continued to flourish, reaching new heights in 1974 when she starred in the film Where the Lilies Bloom. This heartwarming tale depicted the struggles of a destitute sharecropping family, with Jan delivering a compelling performance as the family's eldest daughter. Her portrayal earned her accolades and positive reviews, solidifying her status as a versatile actress. Jan was cast in the British film Trick or Treat, although the project remained incomplete. It was during this period that she began to make her presence known in the world of television. In 1976, she made a brief appearance in an episode of the action-packed ABC series Star Sky and Hutch, foreshadowing her future success in the medium. However, it was her breakthrough role as Bailey Quarters in the CBS sitcom WKRP in Cincinnati that truly catapulted her into the limelight. Jan portrayed the endearing character for a total of 86 episodes, from 1978 to 1982. Her performance as the charming and intelligent Bailey endeared her to viewers and solidified her status as a beloved figure in television history. A little bit about Bailey Quarters, portrayed by Jan Smithers, who undergoes a compelling character arc throughout the series. As the young ingenue of the radio station, Bailey initially held the role of managing billing and station traffic. Her background included graduating from journalism school with some training in editing, and her ultimate ambition was to become a broadcast executive. Bailey's journey within the station takes an interesting turn as her potential becomes more evident. She is eventually given additional responsibilities as an on-air news reporter, a role in which she demonstrates remarkable competence, often outshining her colleague, Les Nessman. This transition not only showcases her evolving skills, but also highlights her determination to achieve her career aspirations. Throughout the series, viewers witness Bailey's transformation from a shy and reserved individual into a confident and capable professional. This personal growth is a central aspect of her character development, making her a relatable and inspiring figure for the audience. A significant storyline in Bailey's character arc emerges in the second season two-part episode titled For Love or Money. In this storyline, she becomes romantically linked with Johnny Fever, one of the station's DJs. This romantic subplot adds depth to her character and provides viewers with insights into her personal life and relationships. The dynamic between Bailey and her more sophisticated colleague, Jennifer Marlowe, is likened to the classic duo of Ginger and Marianne from the popular TV series Gilligan's Island. This comparison underscores the contrast in their personalities and backgrounds, adding to the richness of the character interactions within the show. Interestingly, Jan Smithers was one of the two WKRP cast members who were the first choice for the roles they portrayed, with the other being Gordon Jump. Creator Hugh Wilson noted that despite Smithers' lack of experience in situation comedies, she was the perfect fit for the character of Bailey, as he had originally envisioned her. Wilson recalled that other actresses may have read better for the part, but didn't capture the genuine shyness that he believed Bailey's character required. For those who don't know about WKRP in Cincinnati, 
WKRP in Cincinnati is an iconic American sitcom television series that revolves around the daily mishaps and humorous escapades of the staff working at a struggling fictional AM radio station located in Cincinnati, Ohio. The show was created by Hugh Wilson, who drew inspiration from his own experiences in the world of advertising sales at the real-life Top 40 radio station WQXI in Atlanta. Interestingly, Many of the characters in the show were inspired by actual people he encountered during his time in the radio industry. One noteworthy detail about the show's title, WKRP, is that Wilson chose it with a clever twist in mind. He intended the call sign to stand for CRAP, a humorous nod to the chaotic and often absurd situations that unfolded within the station. The ensemble cast of WKRP in Cincinnati was a talented group of actors who brought the fictional station to life. The main characters included Gary Sandy as Andy Travis. Andy was the new program director brought in to revamp the station and boost its ratings. Howard Hesseman as Dr. Johnny Fever. Dr. Fever was the laid-back and eccentric DJ known for his love of rock music and his on-air antics. Gordon Jump as Arthur Carlson. Arthur was the station's bumbling and well-meaning general manager, who often found himself caught up in the chaos created by his staff, Lonnie Anderson as Jennifer Marlowe. Jennifer was the attractive and sophisticated receptionist who also served as the station's traffic manager. Tim Reed as Venus Flytrap. Venus was the smooth-talking and stylish DJ with a unique sense of humor and an affinity for soul music. Richard Sanders as Les Nessman. Les was the hilariously inept news director known for his quirky personality and distinctive voice. Frank Bonner as Herb Tarlick. Herb was the obnoxious and poorly dressed ad salesman who had a knack for getting on everyone's nerves. The series achieved significant recognition during its run, including winning a Humanitas Prize, which acknowledges television programs that promote human dignity and values. Additionally, WKRP in Cincinnati received a total of 10 Emmy Award nominations with three of them being for Outstanding Comedy Series. In Season 3, Andy Ackerman even won an Emmy Award for videotape editing, highlighting the show's creative and technical accomplishments. WKRP in Cincinnati, premiering on September 18, 1978, on the CBS Television Network. The show enjoyed a successful run for four seasons, totaling 90 episodes, with its final episode airing on April 21, 1982. However, the show faced a series of challenges during its broadcast that affected its ratings and eventually led to its cancellation. One significant obstacle was the constant shuffling of the show's time slot by CBS, which began in the middle of the second season. These frequent schedule changes contributed to lower viewership ratings, making it difficult for the series to maintain a consistent audience. Despite its quality and popularity among viewers, these challenges proved insurmountable for the show's continued success in its original primetime slot. However, WKRP in Cincinnati found a new lease on life when it entered syndication. To the surprise of many, the series became an unexpected hit in syndicated reruns. For a decade following its initial run, the show thrived in syndication and established itself as one of the most popular sitcoms in that format. Remarkably, it even outperformed many programs that had achieved higher ratings during their original primetime broadcasts, including all other sitcoms produced by MTM Enterprises, the company behind WKRP. In a testament to the enduring appeal of the show and its beloved characters, some of the original cast members continued to be associated with WKRP in Cincinnati, even after its cancellation. Gordon Jump, Richard Sanders, and Frank Bonner reprised their roles as regular characters in a sequel series titled The New WKRP in Cincinnati, which aired from 1991 to 1993 in syndication. This spin-off allowed fans to reconnect with some of their favorite characters from the original series. Furthermore, Howard Hesseman, Tim Reed, and Lonnie Anderson returned to the WKRP universe as guest stars in the sequel series further cementing the legacy of the show and the enduring affection viewers had for its characters. WKRP in Cincinnati faced numerous challenges during its initial network run, including scheduling issues and lower ratings, leading to its cancellation. However, its resurgence in syndication turned it into an unexpected success story, making it one of the most popular sitcoms in reruns for a decade. 
The show's enduring appeal led to the creation of a sequel series, allowing both original and new fans to continue enjoying the antics of the characters they loved. Back to Jan, she continued to pursue her film career. In 1978, she played Kathy Wakefield in the drama film Our Winning Season. Two years later, she took on the role of Carol Clark in the TV movie The Love Tapes, showcasing her versatility as an actress. In 1979, Jan made notable appearances on television, including an appearance on the talk show The Mike Douglas Show and participation in the TV special Battle of the Network Stars 7, further enhancing her visibility in the entertainment industry. After her memorable stint in WKRP in Cincinnati concluded in 1982, Jan ventured into the world of guest appearances on various television series. She portrayed characters such as Sabrina Drake, Carol Cooperman, and Aurora Adams in different episodes of the ABC comedy series The Love Boat. Her talent and versatility allowed her to seamlessly transition between different roles and genres. Following these appearances, Jean continued to make guest appearances in numerous series, including The Fall Guy, 1983, Leg Men, 1984, Finder of Lost Loves, 1984, Micah Hammer, 1985, Culver Up, 1985, Murder, She Wrote, 1985, and Comedy Factory, 1985. Her presence on these shows added depth and diversity to her acting portfolio. Jan's last TV appearance came in the form of Janice Copeland in two episodes, 1984-1986, of the ABC primetime drama series Hotel. Her final film appearance was in the 1987 mafia-themed comedy movie Mr. Nice Guy, where she portrayed the character Lisa. In June 2014, Jan joined her fellow WKRP in Cincinnati, cast members for a reunion organized by the Paley Center for Media, providing fans with a heartwarming reunion of the beloved characters from the show. Jan Smithers' career in the entertainment industry, spanning both television and film, left an enduring legacy and a lasting impression on audiences and her colleagues alike. Jan Smithers' personal life was marked by a series of significant relationships and events that shaped her journey beyond the entertainment industry. In 1971, Jan entered into marriage with actor Kip Whitman. However, their union proved to be short-lived, and they divorced just a year later. Subsequently, Jan's life took a transformative turn when she entered into a relationship with actor James Brolin. Their paths initially crossed while filming an episode of Hotel, a significant moment that would alter the course of their lives. Their connection deepened over time, and in 1986, they took their vows at the Greenwood United Church in Nova Scotia. The marriage between Jan and James marked a new chapter in both of their lives. Together, Jan and James welcomed a daughter into their family, named Molly Elizabeth Brolin. Their shared journey as parents brought them closer and created cherished family memories. However, the marriage between Jan and James encountered challenges, leading to their eventual divorce in 1995. Jan cited a lack of time for each other as a primary reason for their separation. James's extensive work-related travel had caused them to grow apart over time. Amidst the breakup, rumors swirled that James had left Jan for renowned singer and actress Barbara Streisand. Jan took the opportunity to clarify this in a 2001 episode of Entertainment Tonight, dispelling the speculations and asserting that their divorce was not linked to a third party. It's worth noting that Jane Cameron, James's first wife, had previously stated that Jan had no involvement in their relationship while James was still married to Jane. This declaration shed light on the circumstances surrounding Jan and James's connection and provided context to their subsequent journey together. As her daughter Molly grew into her high school years, Jan embarked on a life-altering journey of self-discovery and service. She joined a charitable group on a trip to India, where she witnessed firsthand the struggles and hardships faced by the impoverished and underprivileged populations there. This eye-opening experience left an indelible mark on her heart and soul. 
Touched by the plight of the less fortunate, Jan made a heartfelt decision to dedicate herself to philanthropic work. She was determined to bring positivity and change to the lives of those in need. And this became a central focus of her life. Jan's existence shifted towards a holistic and spiritually rich path. Her daily life became centered around meditation, healing, and a deep exploration of spirituality. She embraced the teachings and philosophies of notable spiritual figures, including yoga guru Swami Muktananda, Indian spiritual guru Mata Amritananda Mai, affectionately known as Amma the Hugging Saint, and Indian environmentalist Vandana Shiva. Her commitment to these spiritual leaders and environmentalists not only influenced her personal beliefs, but also guided her actions towards a more conscious and environmentally responsible way of living. Previously, Jan resided in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada, but her spiritual and philanthropic endeavors eventually led her to relocate to Ojai, California, where she continued to follow her newfound path of spiritual growth and service to others. As of late 2022, Jan Smithers has built a substantial net worth, which has been estimated at over $6 million. This wealth is primarily attributed to her successful and noteworthy acting career. Throughout her career in the entertainment industry, Jan has taken on various roles in both television and film, garnering recognition and a dedicated fan base along the way. Jan Smithers' ability to bring her characters to life and connect with audiences contributed significantly to her financial success. Her portrayal of Bailey Quarters on the popular TV series WKRP in Cincinnati remains one of her most iconic roles, earning her acclaim and further solidifying her position in the industry. Beyond her acting career, Jan's involvement in other endeavors, such as her philanthropic work and advocacy for causes close to her heart, may have also contributed to her financial portfolio. Her net worth reflects not only her talent and accomplishments in the entertainment world, but also her dedication to making a positive impact on society. One of the causes closest to her heart has been her fervent opposition to nuclear energy. She actively campaigned against the proliferation of nuclear weapons and was a vocal advocate for solar energy as a sustainable and safe alternative. Her advocacy extended all the way to Washington, where she testified before a congressional subcommittee, despite feeling out of her depth. Jan's unwavering commitment to her principles and causes showcased her courage and determination. Jan's spiritual beliefs played a significant role in shaping her views on the world. She adhered to the guidance of her spiritual teachers, which emphasized staying out of politics. However, she couldn't ignore the potential dangers of nuclear energy, leading her to take a stand. She passionately discussed the byproducts of nuclear energy, such as plutonium, highlighting her strong anti-nuclear stance. In her interactions with the youth of today, Jan Smithers was surprised to discover that a significant majority of them believed racial discrimination would remain a problem for their generation. Her response reflected her core belief in the equality of all people, emphasizing that people are people, we're all the same. She believed that the key to addressing discrimination and violence lay in finding inner peace, even amidst the chaos of the world. To her, conflicts were not insurmountable, and she encouraged others to seek peace within themselves. However, she did express concerns about the economic challenges facing young people. The burden of student loan debt and the difficulty of buying homes weighed on her mind. She questioned the consequences of a generation unable to invest in their future due to financial constraints. In a heartfelt message, Jan Smithers offered a reminder that she didn't have all the answers, but she believed that a higher power did. Her gentle voice conveyed a sense of humility and a deep spirituality that defined her approach to life. Jan Smithers' story is not only a tale of Hollywood success, but also a testament to her unwavering commitment to making the world a better place. Her advocacy for issues like nuclear energy and her belief in inner peace as a solution to societal problems exemplify the depth of her character and her enduring impact beyond the screen. What do you think about Jan Smithers' life post WKRP in Cincinnati? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.